Hello everyone. I am here today with one of my very favorite local lenders, JD Hager. JD and I work together really closely. He is one of my favorite lenders. And if you watch my channel, you know that I really, really prefer to use local lenders. So today JD is going to go over with us just some common things that have been coming up lately. We've got a shifting market. So there are different strategies um, and products out there in the loan world that I am not an expert on, but he is. And I want to just go ahead and go over some of those today. So we are going to start off with arms. What is an arm, JD? Well, Sarah, thanks for having me on your yes. channel. Really excited to be here. An arm is an adjustable rate mortgage, okay. which simply just means that after a certain amount of time, that rate starts to adjust. Okay. Most common is a 10-1, a 7-1, which means that the first number is how long that the actual rate is fixed for. Got it. So if it's a 10-1 arm, your interest rate will be fixed for 10 years. Okay. And then after that, it becomes adjustable with the market. Basically, if rates have gone up, your rate could go up after the 10th year. If rates have gone down, you could benefit. Your rate could go down Okay. with the market. Is there a cap? There is a cap. Okay. So typically there's a, you know, they're structured kind of like a 252, two, which means it can go up 2% in the first year, 5% the lifetime cap. And then basically the max it could go the each year after the first year would be 2% up okay. to that 5% more. Of the lifetime cap. Correct. Okay. Got it. So I just like... You know, in the past market, we've done so many conventional loans, FHA, all that stuff that you've kind of heard about before. What is the scary thing about arms and why have people kind of like stayed away from that? Arms were traditionally scary because they were used to be shorter term arms. People could do a one year arm, a oh. three year arm, a six month arm. Ooh. So you'd get in there okay. within the first <laughs> year and that rate could balloon and shoot way up. Okay. And so it was kind of a scary thing, not knowing where your rate's going to be in your overall payment in 12 months, 24 months whatever that initial set term was. Okay. But what we're seeing more of now is with a, you know, a traditional 30 year fixed loan as mm -hmm. rates have gone up, the margin between that and an arm is significantly, there's a bigger gap now. Oh, okay. With the 10-1 arm, you've got the security of a 10 year period that that rate's gonna be fixed. So it is locked for 10 years. Okay. So that would make this more attractive than this 30 year that's higher. So when you're seeing interest rates, um, you know, I get so many emails and stuff about interest rates. It usually is only like a 30 year conventional for the most part. So you're not getting those arm rates. So just keep that in mind that if you're talking to a lender, if this seems like something that you would do, like if you're not planning on, you know, holding the house for 10 years, this is a good scenario, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if you're not thinking I'm going to live here for the rest of your life, if you're going to live here for the rest of your life, this probably does doesn't make sense. But just knowing that this is an option that is a less uh, lesser rate right now in this current market that we're in. Another thing that I have been hearing more about is kind of seller buy downs. So if you have heard a seller buy down or um, a buyer, what else? What are the terms of those? Um, what are the, so they rate say? buy down. Rate basically. buy down. So what does that mean? Okay. What that means is that every lender has the option and every client has the option to buy their rate. Okay. As rates have gone up, more people are more attracted into buying the rate down to try to get a lower payment. Okay. Anytime there's a buy down or a rate buy down, there's obviously a break even because you have an upfront cost to lower your initial interest rate, which will overall lower your payment. Okay. So whatever the difference of the original rate, that payment with the lower rate, that divided or the, the cost divided by that is your break even. Okay. So this could be something a buyer can do and something a seller could do? Correct. Okay. So right now in this market is it's maybe shifting into a buyer's market somewhat. <laughs> Slowly, perhaps. Slowly. That could be happening at some point. <laughs> Hopefully in the future we see more of that. What I've seen a lot of is, you know, if a buyer or a seller goes in and says, hey, I'm going to offer $500,000 for your house. Yeah, okay. Seller says, okay, great, we'll accept it. Um, rather than saying, hey, I want to offer four ninety six. Mm -hmm. and basically take a 4% or $4,000 credit off the sales price, they may say, I want a seller credit of $4,000. Okay. That can be used to cover closing costs and prepaids, or they could use the seller's money to buy the rate down. Oh. And so let's say that if, you know, just theoretically rates today are five and a half percent, the seller says, hey, here's a $4,000 credit. You can write, buy your rate down to 5%. Mm -hmm. Rather than having five and a half percent, you now have a 5% interest rate. Mm -hmm. There's a huge difference in the monthly payment of lowering your rate half a point versus lowering the sales price $4,000. For the life of the loan. Correct. Okay. 
Okay. So the true benefit there, I'm gonna throw some numbers at you. Love it. Don't For like my numbers people, yeah. I know we'll you're out few. there and you don't like that I don't say a lot of numbers. So here we are today. Here Tell are a me. few numbers. Okay, so let's assume a $500,000 house mm -hmm. with 20% down. So mm -hmm. your loan amount's 400,000. Okay. If the interest rate today was at five and a half percent, your principal and interest is gonna be $2,271.16. Okay. Okay, let's say that you use your buy down to buy the rate to 5%. Mm -hmm. At 5%, your principal and interest is gonna be $2,147.29. Mm. So that savings right there is $123.87. A month, guys, a month. So this is a big deal. So this is something that if you're working with a professional realtor, they're gonna know to use this strategy as well on the sell side or on the buy side to try to help you to get that better rate. So love that. It also, I've seen it a lot of times when a seller actually will market it as, hey, we will give you a credit to buy your rate down because okay. of the savings it gives to the buyer. Okay. It may sound, you know, some people may say, well, it's, I want to get a lower price on the house. Right. So let's say your client says, oh, well, I want to, I want to use that $4,000 and lower the sales price to four ninety six. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we still use the same scenario at $496,000, yep. you're still putting 20% down, which that down payment's still going to be $99,200. Okay. So it's an initial savings on the down payment of $800. Okay. But your interest rate's still going to be that five and a half percent. Mm. Based off of 80% of the 496, which means your loan amount would be $396,000, $396,800. Okay. So if we set it up based on that using the 5.5% interest rate, your principal and interest there will be $2,252. Still higher. So the You're savings following. between the original $500,000 house mm -hmm. and the $496,000 house, just by lowering the price, is only $18. That's it. Sorry. So if you buy your rate down, you're saving 123. If you lower your sales price, you're saving 18. Obviously, there's a right answer there. So love that. And then also one of the things that he mentioned too earlier before we got on camera was if you have your sales price at a higher price, so it's 500 versus 496, you're really just helping the comps of the neighborhood. That's good for everybody to keep the, the home values up. So love that. Um, anything else that's popping up that's coming up, obviously, other than people getting so concerned about the rates going up, we don't want to get too into rates on this, but just tell me really quickly, historically, where are we with rates in the grand scheme of things on uh, leading into a not freak out type of discussion? <laughs> well, historically, we're still with low interest rates. You know, five and a half percent is still a great rate to borrow money at for 30 years or even on the arm where we can take advantage of the lower interest rates. You know, if you're not going to be in the house for more than 10 years, like you mentioned, the arm is yep. a great option. Rates in general, though, if anyone tells you that they know where they're going, they're probably Liars. just lying. Yeah. Because nobody has that crystal ball. <laughs> right. Where we'd be sitting on the beach somewhere. Yes. We do live in large and be watching a different video. <laughs> well, perfect. Well, thank you, JD. Thank you for coming on here. Like I said, JD is a local lender here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. I will have his information below so you can reach out to him. If you do have any lending questions, he is absolutely fabulous. I always send people his way, very thorough. So no question is um, silly or stupid or anything if you don't know what you don't know. So we are here to help with that. So thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time. Thank you.